Hi, I'm Michael Weitzner, and I've been an architect for over 35 years. Today, we're going to look at every live-action depiction of Wayne Manor and how it has evolved over time. Of course, Batman started as a comic strip created by Bill Finger and Bob Kane in Detective Comics in 1939. So let's peek at the source material before we jump into the screen portrayals. So this was how Wayne Manor was portrayed in the early comics. So here's everything that jumps out at me. It's sort of in a Spanish mission style with the stucco and the arched windows. It's got this red tile roof. Compared to all the grandiose palaces that Bruce Wayne is later depicted as living in, this one is extremely modest. Even the windows just underneath this roof line appear to be like they're in a low ceilinged attic space. So this is just a modest suburban house. Nothing grandiose, nothing luxurious like you would expect the billionaire Bruce Wayne to live in. The first live action version of Wayne Manor is from the serial in 1943, simply titled Batman. High atop one of the hills which ring the teeming metropolis of Gotham City, a large house rears its bulk against the dark sky. Hidden headquarters of America's number one crime fighter, Batman. So there's a dark and mysterious photo, I and mean, you can't see a lot, but what you can see are these two gables, which implies that there's two wings to the house. So typically, a pitched roof has a ridge beam, and then it has rafters to create the pitch. And at the end of that roof is the wall, and this is the gable. So obviously the house has gotten much bigger than what was depicted in the comic. And it also has these sort of spires and chimneys and these little towers coming off of it, and you could see this one large dormer coming off this gable on the left. So not only is the image dark, but the series has a dark side as well. Frankly, this was made as an anti-Japanese propaganda film in the middle of World War II and has some very racist depictions of Asian people in it. Next, let's look at Wayne Manor from Batman and Robin in 1949. So here's what jumps out at me. It's just a regular colonial suburban house. I mean, you could see the windows on the second floor with their little shutters and they're double hung with their six over six windows. You could see neighbors walking by. There's not even a fence that sort of walls it off from the rest of the community. Does that set up sound right to you? No, it doesn't. And Batman and Robin had better look into it. It's 1949. The war is over. Compared to the last image that was dark and mysterious, this is a sunny and happy suburban depiction of Wayne Manor. So this house has a long history in film and television. This is the Lindsay House on Blondie Street on the Warner Brothers back lot. Bewitched was filmed here. Dennis the Menace was filmed here. The Three Stooges filmed some stuff here. And in fact, it was Danny Glover's house in the Lethal Weapon movies. Next, let's take a look at the ancestral home of Bruce Wayne from the television series in the 1960s. Millionaire Bruce Wayne and his youthful ward, Dick Grayson, have been summoned back to Wayne Manor by an urgent but anonymous call for help. So there's a lot going on in this house. It's got the double gables like we saw from earlier. It's got this stone bay with an entrance below between them. And the entrance implies a grander entrance that one would use to enter into some big courtyard. And it has this crenellated silhouette of what appears to be like a bat, which I don't believe is intentional, but nonetheless, once you see it, you can't unsee it. It appears to be a collegiate Gothic house with the windows with the stone mullions and then the smaller windows between that you can see here and here. It's made from clinker brick. Those are the bricks that in the kiln stuck to other bricks and when they're broken apart, they become very irregular, which gives it a very textured, articulated feel. And it's got these coins at the corners, which were actually begun by the Romans to reinforce the corners of brick structures. But in this case, it's purely decorative. So they use this motif of decorative limestone detailing, and you could see it on the gables that extend past the roof. You could see it in this medallion, and you could see it in the sills and the frames on the windows and the lintels. It implies a grander level of luxuriousness, specifically because it's more materials and more workmanship and just more labor. Although the show was goofy, it's somewhat campy. Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. It's a really grand and quite beautiful house, and it's much more consistent with what we'll see as we move forward. Next up is Batman from director Tim Burton. 
So here's everything that jumps out at me. This is clearly a real castle. It's got these crenellations, which is indicative of a castle from the Middle Ages. And then it's got these flanking wings, which have this really ornate Gothic feel to them with the stained glass windows and the fine stonework and all this beautiful ornamentation. So this is actually Nebworth House, which was built for the Lytton family starting in the Middle Ages. And one of the descendants of that family is Edward Bulwer Lytton, who was a writer and coined the phrase, the pen is mightier than the sword. So if the last house was a grand residence, this is now a palatial estate. So in terms of the Batman story, this is truly an ancestral home. Do you like eating in here? You know the truth, I don't think I've ever been in this room before. Next up, Tim Burton returns with Batman Returns. So what I like about this house a lot is that at first glance it has the feel of a regular house with this traditional pitched roof and these dormers. But in fact, the scale is so overblown with these multi-stories that he implies by putting in all these tiny little windows that it becomes this sort of fantastical kind of building and right away you know it's not real. He's using a whole series of styles to portray a very spooky and mysterious kind of building. The building has this tripartite feeling to it with these three towers and the central tower being the entrance and a little different than the towers at the edge. And it has this wacky arrangement of these tiny little dormers, which is where the staff would live in a house like this, up in the attic, and they're just placed sort of all willy-nilly. You could see more detail on this building on another model version of it, which is sitting in a fish tank in the film. Ready? I think I'll take the stairs. You could see much more clearly that big, tall stone base, which according to the rest of the building looks like it should be three stories high with these tiny little slot windows and this huge overblown lintel above the slot window. And you can see much clearer on this version that the dormers that pop out and create these sort of three towers, it's got the scale of a huge apartment house. It's like something you expect to see on Central Park West. So this works really well for a movie because the design is really all about fantasy. Meow. So this next depiction of Wayne Manor has been used in several Batman versions over the decades. Wayne Manor. Hmm. Starting from the top, it's got the silhouette of the chimneys and they're all paired. It's got the pitched roof with the dormers. It has this very sort of detailed stone balustrade separating the roof line from the rest of the building. It's got these two wings flanking the central piece of the building. It has these punched windows that are framed in stone, and it has this entrance that we've seen before that implies a grander entrance into a court, but in this case has been reduced just to a double door with an arch. And it has a water line, this stone cornice, that ties the entire thing together. And this is a collegiate style building, but in this case, it's much more stripped down with very little ornament. Although it is quite large and you could see it's on a vast estate. So what's a little different about this building compared to the other buildings is it sort of feels like a school building. It doesn't feel like a palace and it doesn't feel like a house. It sort of feels now like a building that's used for higher education because that's what it is. This is actually Stevenson Taylor Hall at the Webb Institute in Glen Cove on Long Island, and it was built in 1912. This building was used in Batman Forever, Batman and Robin, Joker, and it was even used on the TV show Gotham. So what I find interesting about this depiction of Wayne Manor is that it's a much more sober and pragmatic building than previous depictions. It gives a whole different feeling to the caped crusader. Next up is Wayne Manor as shown in Batman Begins. Okay, so here's everything that jumps out at me. Once again, we've gone to a grand palatial estate. So this is actually a revival of the Elizabethan or Jacobean style, which is all stone and it has this distinctive horizontal banding. So it gives it this feeling that the building is stacked. And this is actually meant more towers in England. And it was built for the Rothschild family in the 1850s. And it was designed by Joseph Paxton, the famous architect 
who built the Crystal Palace for the World Exhibition in 1851 in London. And the other thing that Elizabethan buildings are known for are their very long galleries, which in this case is over here to the right. And these galleries were used to display art. And in fact, Rothschild, who built this house, built it for that same reason, to show off his great art collection. So the Rothschilds were one of the richest families in the world at this time. And so this house, like Nebworth House, gives the impression of how rich and wealthy Bruce Wayne is supposed to be. It's pretty good. Nice car. You should see another one. Now we come to the Dark Knight. So right away you notice this is an interior view. So Wayne Manor burned down in the last film. Everything my family, my father built. The Wayne legacy. And now Batman is living in this penthouse in Wayne Tower. So this is in fact the lobby of a Mies van der Rohe building in Chicago. And so out the window, all this stuff is just green screened in to make it appear as if it's up in the air and is a penthouse apartment. And what leads you to believe that it's a lobby is the great ceiling height that you can see here. It appears to be, you know, 25 feet tall. The other thing that sort of implies that this is the ground level and not a penthouse, is that if it were a penthouse, these columns really wouldn't need to be this big because they'd only be supporting the roof. They wouldn't be supporting all these multiple floors like they would have to in a lobby. The other thing that makes it seem like a Mies van der Rohe design is this very simple ceiling treatment with these very small recessed lights and that ceiling extends out to the covered colonnade beyond. The thing about Mies van der Rohe is he was a modern architect, very minimalist. In fact, he coined the term less is more and so now Batman, instead of living in these really ornate and luxurious homes, is now living in this sort of more elegant, refined, stripped down, minimalist sort of environment. So the views that were depicted out the windows in the previous image were actually filmed on the 39th floor of the Royal Sinesta Hotel, also in Chicago. And they also used the Royal Sinesta for the exterior shots of the apartment. You can throw a party, Wayne, I'll give you that. So here's a view of the Royal Sinesta Hotel in Chicago. It's almost a pretty good match in terms of the colonnade along the edge here and the roof extending out beyond the building. And right away, you know that that interior shot was not really filmed here. Because in this shot, you could see there's these clerestory windows above the main windows. And in that previous shot, that's not visible. So clerestory windows are actually just windows that are up high above the main bank of windows. And they actually have their origin in Gothic architecture. In Gothic churches, they were the windows above the side aisles in the main hall. Okay, let's look at the very next film, The Dark Knight Rises. So in this film, Bruce Wayne lives in another palatial estate. And this one, in actuality, is Wallaton Hall. And this is a real Elizabethan building. It's ironic that this is being portrayed as the rebuilt home after the fire, because Mentmore Towers was based on this building, Wallaton Hall. What will you do? Rebuild it. Just the way it was, brick for brick. So this is a real Elizabethan building built in the era of Queen Elizabeth I in the 1580s and it was designed by Robert Smithson. So obviously using these two Elizabethan buildings and Mies van der Rohe, Christopher Nolan has very good taste in architecture. Next up is Wayne Manor as seen in the Zack Snyder films. So this building, which is supposed to be Wayne Manor, is way in the distance, but you can still see a few things. So obviously this is a classical building informed by Greek architecture, and the way you could see that is right here at the center of this facade, there's the pediment being supported by the four columns. And in this version, Wayne Manor also burns down, and we can get a closer view of it in the next image. So here you can see more of the architecture of the building. So again, you see that Greek temple facade in the middle, and then you see these sort of two flanking wings with the paired pilasters or pillars at the edges, creating this sort of entrance way on either side. And you can see the very strong entablature along the top, and everything else is sort of burnt out. So there is some CGI going on here to make it feel like a ruin. But in fact, it really is a ruin. This is Sutton Scarsdale Hall, designed by Francis Smith in the 1720s, which makes it a Georgian building. And Georgian style buildings quite often 
employed Greek elements. And it's a ruin because it was actually sold to developers in the early 1900s who stripped the entire interior, including the roof, and sold it all off. It had these grand interiors with these beautiful oak panels. And one of the people who bought some of the interiors were William Randolph Hearst, and he was gonna use these beautiful wood panels to decorate his Hearst castle, but in fact never ended up doing that and sold it to others who then used it as the interiors in other films. Now we come to The Batman, starring Robert Pattinson as Bruce Wayne. So once again, now we have a tower instead of a mansion. So this is what jumps out at me, starting at the top. It's got this really ornate, art deco-y, gothic silhouette, which is really quite common for a lot of early skyscrapers in American cities. And as the building moves down, it becomes more stripped down as it gets closer and closer to the ground. And by the time it hits the sidewalk, it's really just a very stripped down, mid-century modernist design, albeit with this sort of classical colonnaded entrance. So I suspect this is not a real building just because of this sort of amalgamation of styles. And in fact, one can't help but notice that they use the silhouette of a bat at the very top with his wings extended. So in this case, you could tell it was intentional because you know it's not a real building. So what this appears to me is actually a piece of Chicago that was then enhanced with CGI. To the left, it appears to be Michigan Avenue and we're looking north and you could see the sunken railroad tracks. And in fact, off here to the right, you could see the Frank Gehry design band shell. So the top being really ornate like this sort of reminds me of some of New York skyscrapers like the American Radiator Building that have these really ornate tops to the building. The other thing that's sort of reminiscent of is a, a Gothic bell tower like you would see at Riverside Church. And that's interesting because when we look at the interior, it's filled with Gothic elements. Okay, so this is Batman's lair. And if it's not the interior of a Gothic church, it's a really good forgery. And what strikes me about it is the overbearing ornament that's sort of reminiscent of bat wings you can see here. These almost look like the legs of a bat that's standing and its wings are extended. And it has this very lacy, spidery stonework that's still in the sort of Gothic language. One could almost feel that they're almost like stalagmites and stalactites that you would find in a cave, like the bat cave. So I think the filmmakers are doing that intentionally. But then at the same time, they give you this big, really big window at the right to let you know that it's still a modern building. The idea is that Batman lives in this very dark and mysterious cave-like place, which is very reminiscent of the very first image. So in the early 20th century, when a lot of these skyscrapers were built, they were built as sort of these cathedrals of commerce, they were called. And the companies that built them liked to really show off their sort of wealth and power. And quite often they did these really ornate beautiful boardrooms on the interiors. And this sort of is reminiscent of that, but it's taking it to a whole other level. So the last thing I wanna say about this building is that the address of the building in the film is 139 Kane Avenue, a reference to Bob Kane, one of the co-creators and illustrator of the original Batman comic. So those are all the architectural details I noticed in the live action depictions of Wayne Manor. Let me know what you think in the comments below.